Hello everybody, and welcome to another Pants Shadow Priest Guide. Today we're going to talk about General Vezex, and I'll give you some tips and tricks that you can use as a Shadow Priest to improve your play and help your raid secure a Flare of the Heavens. I'm going to be talking primarily about Hard Mode, as it's almost exactly the same fight as regular, except you have to wait for the Serenite Animus to spawn at the end of the fight. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content, and let's hop into the guide. First up, let's talk about talents. So there are two talent setups that I'm going to talk about, and I'll provide links to both of them in the description of the video below. On this fight, it's perfectly fine to use the standard Shadow Priest talents. Personally, I've used this talent setup for every fight in Ulduar. This is because my second talent setup is for healing, and I don't want to pay gold to keep resetting my Shadow talents. That being said, there is another talent setup that I think is really good for this fight. This talent setup removes points from Improved Mind Blast. That's because we're not going to be casting Mind Blast on this fight, and I'll talk about that in the rotation section. But we're going to move those points into talents that reduce our threat and reduce mana consumption. This is because mana is a limited resource on this fight, and the longer it goes, the more stressful it's going to be. We're going to move the points from Improved Mind Blast and put them into Shadow Affinity and Focus Mind. We'll have one point left over, and I put that into Improved Vampiric Embrace, but you can put it wherever you want. The reason I put it into Improved VE is because once Hard Mode begins and the Animus spawns, he's going to cast a raid-wide stacking Shadow debuff. This deals Shadow damage and increases Shadow damage taken by 10% every time he casts it. So while it's not a ton of healing, the extra healing from Improved VE can help keep your group topped up. Next up, let's talk about gear. Gearing for General Vezix is different than most fights in Ulduar. This is because when we're standing in the puddle left over from a Shadow Crash, we get some really spicy buffs. These buffs are a 100% increase to our damage, a 100% haste increase, and a 75% mana reduction cost of our spells. Because of these buffs, we don't want to be gearing for haste and we want to focus on getting as much crit as we possibly can. The more crit we have, the more damage we're going to be doing. Sundial of the Exiled is a phenomenal trinket to use if you have it, as well as Eye of the Broodmother. Unfortunately, with Eye, it's possible that your spell damage buff could fall off if you get unlucky with Shadow Crashes. It's still a really good trinket, but just know that you might not be able to get full value out of it if you have bad RNG. You don't need to gear exclusively for crit, but the more you have, the more it's going to benefit your damage on this fight. Next up, let's talk about mana on this fight. So as I mentioned, you can't regain mana during this fight, as your natural mana regeneration just doesn't work. But there are a few ways you can regain mana. These are from using the items Dark Runes, Demonic Runes, Potion of Nightmare. A Paladin can use Divine Intervention on someone, and then that person can be innervated. Note that this is the only way for Innervate to work on this fight, as casting it normally will do nothing. You can die and be resurrected, and this is best used with Warlocks and Soulstones, but if you're able to get a Soulstone, then killing yourself and coming back to life is a perfect way to regain some mana. Lastly, you can use Divine Hymn. This is a temporary way to restore mana, so once the buff falls off, all of your mana will disappear, so just be careful, but it is a great way to finish out the fight if you just have a few percent left. That's really it for restoring mana, but I'll talk about ways that you can save mana through your rotation in the rotation section. Next up, let's talk about healing debuffs on the boss. So this is a little bit interesting, and it might not apply to you, it kind of depends on how your raid is set up. One of the spells that Vezex will cast is called Mark of the Faceless. This will only be cast on ranged DPS, but if you have ranged DPS die, then he can start targeting melee, so your melee needs to be careful. Anyway, this is a spell that will target a player, and that player will siphon life from anybody nearby. This will heal Vezix for a large amount. This healing can be reduced by 50% through various means. A rogue can use wound poison, a hunter can use aim shot, or alternatively, a shadow priest and affliction warlock can cover this debuff. The 20% healing reduction from improved mind blast paired with an Affliction Warlock's Shadow Embrace will also add up to cover the 50% healing reduction. Unfortunately, this means you must be talented into Improved Mind Blast, and you'd have to cast Mind Blast throughout the fight, which is something we don't want to do. Again, I'll talk about that more in the rotation section. This is something that's more important for 10-man, as raid comps can vary drastically between groups. So try to understand if anybody else in your raid is providing a healing debuff before you switch out of Improved Mind Blast. 
It's not necessary to have a healing debuff, but it'll just reduce the amount of damage that you need to deal with the boss. If mana is an issue, then having a healing debuff is a way that you can shorten the length of the fight. Now let's talk about the rotation and the boss fight itself. When you first engage the boss, you'll be waiting for a Shadow Crash to be targeted onto your group, so use your wand to DPS until you get one. Once you have a puddle to stand in, it's DPS time. Note that you want to make sure that you do not DPS when you're outside of a Shadow Crash. It's the fastest way to lose damage and mana. You're not getting any of the damage buffs of the Shadow Crash, and you're spending full mana on every cast. If your ranged are split into two groups, then be careful of the timing of your Shadow Crash puddle. This is because if you're standing in a puddle and you notice that the other ranged group has gotten multiple Shadow Crashes back to back, it's likely the puddle you're standing in is going to disappear soon. If that's the case, then try not to spend any high mana spells. This would be your dots, so if you think your Shadow Crash puddle is going to fade away soon, then just keep spamming Mind Play to wait until it disappears. So as I mentioned earlier, we don't want to cast Mind Blast on this fight. Mind Blast is our lowest damage per mana spell, so if we're not casting dots, we only want to cast Mind Play. That means that your rotation for maximum DPS is to maintain your dots and cast Mind Play. If your mana is getting low and the fight isn't close to over, then you need to conserve your mana. There are two ways you can do this. Number one is to just stop casting entirely. Number two is you can stop casting your dots and only cast Mind Flay. Mind Flay is our spell that deals the most damage for its mana cost, so you want to make sure that if you're trying to save mana but you still want to deal damage, make sure you're only casting Mind Flay. But you can also stop casting if your mana is lower than the other casters. This fight is not a race, especially if you're doing hard mode, so you want to make sure that everybody in your raid has a balanced amount of mana. If you're using mana faster than some of the other ranged in your raid, then let them DPS while you sit back. This isn't going to be good for your parse, but if you're going for a first kill in hard mode, you want to make sure you have enough mana going into the Animus that you can kill it without going oom. If you are going to hard mode, then Warcraft Logs pauses all hard mode parses when the boss reaches 5% until the Animus spawns. So once you hit 5%, there's no reason to cast anything. Just save your mana and wait for hard mode to begin. Other than that, just make sure you don't get hit by Shadow Crash, and if you get Mark of the Faceless, get out of the group immediately as this is going to heal Vesix. The more you heal him, the more damage you're going to have to do to him, and the more mana it's going to cost you. Overall, General Vesix is an encounter that gets drastically easier with gear and getting more comfortable with the fight. I hope you find this guide helpful, and let me know in the comments if there are any other bosses or guides you want to see in the future. My name's Pantsface, and I'll see you in the next one.